Welcome back. We have another MemGPT video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get MemGPT powering your Autogen agents. It is so, so cool. Now, again, this stuff is cutting edge. So there's going to be some bugs. There's going to be some friction, but it does work and they're constantly evolving these projects. And soon, these are gonna be super mature projects. So if you're watching this video, you're way ahead of the game. So let me show you how to do it. Let's go. So I have some code that was provided by the MemGPT authors, and I made some minor edits to it, but I'll drop my code in a gist in the description below. But the first thing we're gonna do is open up Visual Studio Code, have a new file called app.py, take the code from that gist file and paste it into app.py. And this is what it should look like. You will have to put your own API key in here. And yes, I am going to revoke this API key before publishing this video. So with that said, we obviously need to get MemGPT and Autogen installed. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're gonna do is spin up a new Conda environment. Conda create dash n auto memgpt python equals 3.11.3. Hit enter. And I have to remove my existing environment, but you don't have to do that. Now that we're done setting it up, we're gonna activate the environment. So conda activate auto memgpt, hit enter. And then in the bottom right, make sure that you have the conda environment selected, Python 3.11.3 auto memgpt conda. It also shows it right here, so we're all set up. Now we do have to install it. Now, even with conda, I still struggle with module management. So I'm gonna show you a little trick to make it even easier. So with this next command, I'm gonna install two things. I'm gonna install pi memgpt and pi autogen. Memgpt now comes in a Python module, which makes it super easy to use. And the little trick that I mentioned is we're actually gonna run Python from this conda environment that I just created. So you need to find the folder that represents this conda environment, and it's right there, and then now we know when we run pip install, it's going to install to the right place. So we resolve this location, dash m pip install pi memgpt and pi autogen, then hit enter. Okay, so I had a little mistake. I forgot the initial slash right there. And that's why it said that there's no such file or directory. So then I just hit enter and now it should install everything to the proper directory. And that's just one less variable that we have to worry about when using Python modules. And there we go, now it's all installed and all the yellow underlines went away so we know that it's gonna import correctly, amazing. Okay, so now let me walk you through the code. So we're gonna import Autogen and then we're gonna import all these different parts of the memgpt library. And again, you should already have this because I dropped a gist in the description below. So we import a whole bunch of stuff. We're gonna import OpenAI right here and this is where we're gonna set our OpenAI API key. Then in the config list, all we need to do is specify the model as GPT-4. We are gonna be using GPT-4 here, but we could technically use an open source model plus Autogen plus MemGPT, but that's a little too crazy for this video. And so all this is like normal. We have the LLM config, then we're creating an Autogen user proxy agent, but here is where the new stuff happens. First, we create this interface object. And the authors explained it to me as really the way that MemGPT talks to Autogen because MemGPT has all of this dialogue that isn't necessarily inference and it needs to output that to the terminal. So this is how it knows how to do that. And then the persistence manager helps us store all of the stuff we wanna store in memory. And then I'm gonna define my persona and this is the persona for MemGPT. And then I'm gonna define what I believe is the system message. So that's where human is. Human, I'm a team manager at a Fang tech company. And then we pass that all into this presets.use preset. And we have a bunch of parameters that can be passed in, but at the end, what we get is a memgpt agent. And right here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a coder. So we have the memgpt autogen.memgpt agent. We're going to name it memgpt coder. And for the agent, we're going to pass in this memgpt agent that we just created. Now here we have an assistant agent, which is going to be a PM, a product manager, but this is just going to be a normal non memgpt agent then everything else is like normal and we initiate the chat first send the message let's go mario all right let's see if it all works we're just going to hit play right there and it's working first send the message let's go mario and now it's running inference and we can actually see this is the memgpt coder and the cool thing is just like using MemGPT, we can actually see the internal dialogue happening with MemGPT. That's pretty unusual, but they're the boss. Let's go Mario. 
And then it says, let's go Mario, function success. And now we're running more inference. So now this should be on the chat manager, which is a normal auto gen agent. All right, here we go. And now the product manager back to the chat manager has a bunch of ideas of different apps that we can create. And now it's asking for feedback, but I'm not gonna continue there. We see right here that it is using MemGPT as an auto gen agent. How awesome is that? And so that's it for this video. If you wanna see me do a deeper dive into using Mem MGPT agents with Autogen. Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.